Hey guys, 420 Scene here, back at it again with another video. I hope everyone out there is having themselves a super stony day. Let me know what you're talking on and where you're watching the video from. I always like to know. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret unlisted grow and smoke videos, or if you want to get some one-on-one -on -one grow help, totally check us out on Patreon. I'm going to have the link in the upper right-hand corner over here. Today we're going to be talking about something that's been affecting a lot of gardens lately, and it's something I feel like everyone deals with at one point or another, so I figured I would just make a video talking about thrips. Yeah, those nasty fuckers, man. It's just another insect that's gonna fuck your ladies up, and I'll show you how you're gonna be able to spot thrips. They're part of the airborne division, and if you've never seen what they look like, I'm gonna have a picture on screen right away so you can see. They're usually like a little over one millimeter long. They got narrow wings, and they're either gonna be white with some yellowing on them, or they can also be black, but usually the ones that I've seen are white with some yellowing on them, and see what the like to do is they like to put holes in your leaves and they suck the life out of your ladies all that good stuff and it's not really that big of a deal if you see maybe like one or two in there but if you got like a huge infestation that could be a real major problem super quickly but chances are you're gonna notice an infestation and not really if it's just one or two but like if you do see one or two don't freak out just kind of get rid of them the biggest signs that you got a thrips problem is the black dots on the underside of your leaves the growth of your ladies they're gonna stop because they're sucking all the good stuff from them. So a lot of the energy that would be used for your ladies, they're just kind of just taking it for themselves. They're, they're robbing you blind, bro. Now, there are a few things that you can do to get rid of them. And unfortunately, microbe lift won't do anything. I know I've mentioned microbe lift in a lot of my videos. They're more for the infantry division, pieces of shit insects. They're more of a problem to get rid of in the flowering stage. And you know what, actually, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that it's safe to say that if you're in the flowering stage and you have yourself a major bug problem, I'm talking about like infestation kind of bug problem, especially thrips, it's equivalent to get and bone dry side by cacti. If you got an itch down there, then I don't know, maybe it's not really that big of a deal, but yeah, I can imagine it would suck for most of us. But having said that, whenever you have a thrips problem, just remember this conversation. Neem oil is probably the best thing that you can use. You can use it as a foliar spray since they are airborne. They have wings, they can fly, duh. I remember the first time I had a thrips problem. I had to do some research on how much you should be mixing like with the neem oil. And this has been kind of a speculation of controversy and a lot of people don't really know exactly how much you should be giving them. You know, you got the neem oil, but how much are you supposed to be using? So from what I've learned and what I've done is I like to mix one tablespoon per gallon of water. Let's be real, right? Most insects are terrible for your ladies, but the only exception that I know would be ladybugs and green lacewings. And I feel like people already know about the ladybugs being good, but not many people really know about the green lacewings. So if you see either of those, you're in the clear. If you're trying to avoid getting thrips, I only had thrips once and I don't really remember why I got them, but the best way to prevent it is of course, just use those reflective sticky aphid traps. They work on aphids, but they also work on thrips as well and they're going to be attracted to that reflection and they're not going to be able to resist also this goes without saying keep your shit clean i mean really clean after you're done with each run just disinfect everything and make sure everything is solid for your next run because after four months three four months your grow space can get really hogged up so keep it clean. Now the one time that I did have a thrips problem, I do clearly remember that it was in the summertime, so I don't want to say that you won't get it during the winter months, but the odds are extremely low. But that doesn't mean to ignore the cleanliness of your grow space, obviously. You, you always just want to make sure to keep it clean. There's a lot of different insects that are just really bad for your lady. So just to name a few, obviously thrips, that's what the whole purpose of this video is. Don't forget about fungus gnats, um, aphids, that's also, you know, those are like the obvious ones, but all also, be careful of broad mites. I did have that last summer. I had broad mites last summer, and I know the reason that I had broad mites, and I'm just telling you guys so you guys can kind of stay aware. I was using alfalfa sprouts to kind of test it out. I was using alfalfa sprouts in my soil, you know, so it would it would spring up and it would kind of look like grass. And I didn't realize it at the time, but that's what attracted those broad mites. So just kind of be careful with that. Now, since we're talking about broad mites, spider mites, you know, they really suck. And you can avoid getting spider mites as long as you have really good airflow. And it's kind of hard to get them to web out your ladies when there's air blowing. I, I mean, even if it's just a straight up gentle breeze, it's still gonna be a lot harder for them to web out as opposed to, you know, if you just have like stagnant air. They love the stagnant air. I remember a couple of years back, my mom was doing a <laughs> My mom, of all people, she was...
Of all people, my mom was doing a run and like the webbing was crazy. I think they had to go on vacation and they had it in the basement. The air was stagnant. There wasn't much airflow and they, it, the webbing was really bad and that's how she got spider mites. So, you know, if you're trying to avoid all that stuff, then make sure you have good airflow. Leaf miners, they are another one. And I feel like leaf miners, they're less common than all the other ones like the spider mice, the broad mice, the fungus gnats, the aphids, and the thrips, you know, but do not think that you won't get it. But leaf miners, they do a different kind of damage. Think about it though, right? Leaf miners, they are exactly what they sound like. They dig themselves inside of your leaves and it just makes your leaves look almost like they got scratch marks. And what else makes them a really big problem? We're talking about strictly leaf miners is they'll start keeping their eggs like where they bury. It's almost like their own personal little cave. So that's probably the best way I can explain the way leaf miners dig up into your leaves. Bottom line, just get rid of any kind of insects that are not ladybugs or green lace wings. I did mention microbe lift. Now that's more for fungus gnats, broad mites, pretty much anything infantry, anything that's going to be crawling around in your soil. And if you ever get microbe lift, make sure to get the mosquito control. I know if you look on Amazon, there's a whole bunch of microbe lift and I'm going to leave a picture on screen so you can see exactly which microbe lift mosquito control I'm talking about. So this is the one that you should be getting. It doesn't mess with your microbes, even though it's got that name and they are super effective. I've been using this since I started. So I've been using microbe lift for like 11 years. And the first time that you use it, this is what my shop guy told me. And it's just kind of the general consensus, the general rule that I go by. Make sure to do six drops per gallon of water on your very first time. And then it's gonna be two drops per gallon of water every other time. And you can do this every watering. Like you can just, so do the six drops and then mix it up. And then after that, two drops and mix it up. And you can use this microbe lift every time you water. It's not gonna affect anything. And you can even use it with silica. You can use it with any kind of nutrient, any kind of mixture. So you're perfectly fine using that microbe lift. I just know somebody in the comment section is gonna ask about the microbe lift and uh, how much should you be giving? So again, to reiterate one more time, six drops per gallon of water the very first time and then two drops per gallon of water every other time after that. And you can use that all the way up until the end of flowering. Even if you don't have any kind of bugs, you could still keep just using that microbe lift. That way you're deterring a problem that hasn't happened yet. So you're essentially just staying ahead of the game, staying ahead of the curve and just preparing yourself. Also, if there's anything that you guys want to add, be sure to drop it in the comment section below and maybe any tips that I might have missed. And we want to get this to like 2 million, 100, I don't know, 100,000, as many, as many comments and likes as possible. You know what I'm saying? That's what us content creators live and breathe with. Before I close out today's video, I want to thank everyone on screen for supporting us on Patreon. I really appreciate appreciate the love and support. And then everyone else, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And most importantly, turn on your post notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. And as always, stay safe. Peace.